Today I will show you a cool color scheme for the new O12 Torchlight Brigade releases from Corvus Bellis Infinity. But of course you could use the same color scheme for a faction in a different miniature range as well. Hey guys, I'm Zoltan and you are watching Phalanx Miniatures. First let me show you some of the cool new minis that come in the box and an interesting new thing that I haven't seen in any Infinity box before. And then I'll show you an easy to follow step by step guide on how I painted the green armor, the bronze and the steel bits as well as the glowing pinkish purple sword if you want to use it for your own torchlight brigade or some other faction or game system. Infinity has had a couple of really cool miniature releases since I started painting the model range, but they really managed to hit it out of the park with this box of minis. These guys are basically the elite of the elite, the best forces of O12, which is a kind of space police force, I guess. And accordingly, they use the best possible gear you can imagine, including some really advanced heavy armor. For painters, this means that these models are somewhat bigger than what we are used to from Infinity, and therefore they are also somewhat easier and maybe more fun to paint. But frankly, if you are used to painting Space Marines, you will feel right at home at this scale, while you can also enjoy a different aesthetic at the same time. The nice forks at Corvus Belly sent me the army box to paint, and when I got my hands on it, I immediately started putting some of the coolest looking models together to choose a couple for painting. And one interesting thing that I noticed, and I believe this is the first time I've seen this, is that this box has a combination of thermoplastic and metal minis. And I don't just mean that the biggest mini, the Silver Star Prime, is fully plastic and the normal size ones are metal, but also that the jump bags, which really remind me of Space Marines by the way, are thermoplastic, but the actual mini they attach to are metal. This was a bit weird at first, but worked quite well in practice and you won't notice the difference once the model is primed and painted. I'm not sure how they perform on the tabletop, but from a painting perspective these minis are great. The design is fantastic and since they are almost space marine size, they are somewhat easier to paint than the usual Infinity troops. So let's talk about actually painting them. I wanted to finish them relatively close to the release, so instead of painting a lot of them to a medium standard, I decided to go for my favorite one, the Silver Star Prime, and paint it up to a relatively high standard as a prototype model. Later I can use the same color scheme and find ways to achieve a similar look faster and easier, but for now I wanted to achieve my ideal look for the army. I do love the original color scheme of blue and gold, but the problem is that I already have an army that looks like that, <coughs> Ultramarines, and I just recently put out a video about how to paint them as well. So if you want to paint yours blue and gold, check that out and it should look quite nice on these models as well. Alternatively, you can also check out my video about the Zeta unit, the O12 tag I painted in the traditional O12 colors. But today I will paint this guy in a scheme that is completely unique among all my armies in green, bronze and steel. And the goal is to come up with something that will really pop both in a display case or if you put it down on a tabletop. Let's start with the green armor first since that's going to be the main color for our army. My inspiration for this will be the combination of colors I used in a previous video for a really cool looking stone. And that sounded much more reasonable in my head than saying it out loud, but believe me, it will look awesome. First things first, I will base coat all the armor panels that I want to be green with dark sea blue. I am using the biggest brush I can get away with and make sure to cover everything. Then I will mix 50% emerald and 50% dark sea blue and I will cover most of the surface again, only leaving the original dark sea blue where I want the deepest shadows to be. One easy way to figure out where you want the highlights and the shadows is to take a picture of the black prime model with your phone under your desk lamp. Wherever the light is reflecting the most is where you should have your brightest highlights and wherever the model remains the deepest black is where you should place your shadows. But of course in the end you can use your own judgement about where you want these as well, the photos are more what you would call guidelines rather than actual rules. Next I will switch to pure emerald and this is where things get serious. First of all I will edge highlight everything with this color, it doesn't matter where it is on the armor, if it's an edge it will get a highlight. I'll also start creating a transition on all the panels that are big enough for it. Technically I already started with the previous color since by placing the deeper shadows I determined which direction the panel should be getting brighter. And now I'm just pushing this further and after this color there should be an obvious color transition on the armor panels usually going from bottom to top. Since the top facing armor panels should be brighter than the rest, these can be still fully covered by this color. A good example for this are the panels on his shoulder behind his head. The two previous colors were close enough in brightness and tone that I didn't really bother glazing over the transitions, but with pure emerald the cut between the two colors will be much more obvious, so I'll have to do something about that. So to help hide the transition point and to make the armor look more visually interesting as well, I will do a couple of scratches and some stippling at the border between the two colors. 
Then I will make a glaze of the same emerald color, remove most of the moisture from the bristles and drag the brush from the previous color towards the highlights that I just created with the emerald. A couple of coats of this should mask and smooth the transition between the previous mix and the emerald sufficiently for the quality we are going for here, but if you really like smoothness, you can of course do more glazes until it's perfect. So far everything has been quite standard, but now it's time to mix it up a bit. I'll mix 50% grass green and 50% emerald and use it to do the same thing as before with only a couple of differences. One, I will use it on a much smaller surface inside the previous emerald highlights and two, I will not highlight and edge highlight absolutely everything with it. Some of the deep shadow areas I will leave only painted with the previous mix. But the really interesting thing about this step is that this color will bring my color scheme into a completely different direction. Up until this point all the colors were a kind of blue-green, but this one is a yellowish green. This will make the green armor much more vibrant due to the yellow it contains, but also because now I create contrast not only between the darker shadows and the brighter highlights, but also between the different tones in the shadows and the mid-tones and the highlights. And of course I will also continue with my little scratches and dots and the glazing over them to hide the transitions. In fact, I will do that after every single color after this as well. But we are almost there, the next step is of course doing the same thing with pure grass green. And things are getting easier now since there is less and less surface to cover, but at this point it is also important to use another trick to make the mini look even more cool and for it to have a lot of contrast. So far I created contrast between dark and light areas and between tones, bluish green and yellow, but now it's time to create some contrast between some parts of the model as well. And I already started when I stopped highlighting in the deeper shadow areas and started concentrating my highlights on the light sides of the model, but now I will do it more dramatically. When I took the photo of the prime model I placed it in a way that the light was coming from above and from the right. Now I'm reinforcing this idea by only highlighting the right upper side of the model with this color almost exclusively. The rest of the areas will keep their previous highlights and edge highlights, but I will only use this color on everything that would be hit by a light beam coming from the top and the right. And now it's time to switch to an almost pure yellow color pistachio. This is more yellow than green, so I will need to really limit how much area I cover with it, otherwise I might risk turning the armor into yellow rather than green. I am really concentrating this on the upper right side of the model, making the difference between the darker and the lighter sides even more dramatic. Finally I use a tiny bit of laser yellow in the most prominent highlights and on the most prominent edges. There is one final touch I want to do before I call the green finished, but first I will correct all the mistakes around the green with pure black. I simply paint everything I smudged with the greens back to its original black color so we can see better what we did with the armor. Then I will do the last optional step, glazing a little violet into the deepest shadows. Violet is a great shadow color for green and this allows me to sneak another color onto the mini. And with that the green armor is done and it's time to move on to the secondary colors. Remember that my objective with this scheme is to really make it pop, so I didn't want to go for a more standard pale gold, instead I wanted to have a super colorful old gold or bronze. So I will start from a completely red base, covering everything that I wanted to paint gold in burnt red. This might look a bit crazy, but bear with me. Next I switch to medium rust, which is essentially a nice saturated orange color. The goal here is very similar to what I did on the green panels, I need to cover most of the red, leaving only some visible in the shadows, and creating color transitions on all the larger surfaces while edge highlighting everything. But there are two differences. One, I won't do much glazing here since all the surfaces are relatively small so the transition points will be easy to hide. And two, I will need to push the contrast higher than on the green armor since this needs to look more shiny than that. Next I will switch to light rust and continue highlighting and just like with the green I will highlight only in places where the light would hit to create more contrast. Sahara yellow is next and after this the metal will more or less look like the way it should. This is a pretty big jump from the previous oranges though so I will do a lot of little scratches and dots to mask the transition. Then I will go with sand yellow and reduce the size of the highlights and the edges I paint even more dramatically to the ones fully in the light. Finally I will do the same with ice yellow only on some select corners and edges and some small dots of pure white here and there. And that was the bronze done, now it was time to figure out what to do with the rest of the elements. My initial idea was to do a simple steel non-metallic metal, but since I had some greens, yellows and oranges on the model I thought that I should do something crazy and do a steel non-metallic metal but with violets, since that is a great complementary color for everything I already have on the model. Now this will look a bit weird initially, but once again just bear with me. First I covered everything with violet and I'm not sure how much you can see the difference through the camera between this and the black, 
The difference is not huge, but it's there, believe me. Then I mixed some violet with anthracite gray, more or less 50-50, and I used it to cover all the surfaces facing the light. It looks super weird for now, but that is fine. I went with pure anthracite grey next, following the same technique I used for the bronze before but with different colors. And the goal is to establish a color transition on all the surfaces and to highlight all the edges. And of course let's not forget about the small scratches and dots to make it easier to smooth things out by using the same color as a glaze. Now before you start to relax, since anthracite grey is quite standard when it comes to non-metallic metal, I added in some pastel violet to continue the craziness, using it the same way as the previous color but once again on a smaller surface. And as you probably guessed, I went with pure pastel violet after this. And finally finishing with ivory, with only a couple of dots of white on some select edges. In the end it is not so easy to tell that it was done with violets, but it still looks more interesting together than a simple black to grey to white transition would. There was only one thing missing now to complete the color scheme, to add a glow effect to the sword with some pink fluo, which synergizes well with all the violets, greens and yellows of the model. And then the end result looks like this. Thank you very much for watching, if you liked the video please consider giving it a like and if you didn't like it, give it a dislike, you will help the channel either way. See you in the next one.